Hello, good morning, and welcome to Dawn Buster's Taste Challenge. Yeah, it's still dark outside. Uh, we're into July now, so every day that goes by, it's going to take longer and longer for the sun to rise in the morning, and it'll get darker earlier every day. Uh, but I can see little peaks of daylight, little peaks, little peaks. People often ask me, why do you do these in the dark? I can't see your face too well. Uh, <clears throat> there's not much to see anyway, and... Uh, it's more of a radio show. You listen to it more than watch it, but you can watch it, of course. And I like to see the sun naturally come up, the sunrise during the um, Dawn Busters, the whole point of Dawn Busters. Okay. Who are the competitors? Well, we've got a big series of Sa Sazerac brands coming up. So we're going to do William Grant's, Grant's, let's call Grant's, tr triple wood today because they give it treatment in three different types of woods. It used to be called Family Reserve. Most people just call it Grant's. I mentioned it to a store manager yesterday. I said, I reviewed Grant's. And then he exclaimed, basically, almost like shouted out, oh, that's the bottom of the shelf or something like that. That's bad. And I was like, uh, basically what he was saying. I said, well, it's not the bottom of it it's close you know i mean it's not as low grade as far as price point as say sir malcolm or a uh, hundred pipers around here is very cheap although to me it's much better than average uh for what you're paying then you got your private labels winn dixie scotch i don't think it's going to get cheaper than that your uh cvs pharmacy scotch which is called a uh, grand legacy i'd like to try those but i'm reluctant to do it just because the viewers you know i care about the viewers and they're gonna probably say oh uh, you know why don't you do something better because we don't want to hear about these private labels and then trader joe's has some single malt and blended these are blended i can understand that and i actually agree with that but then I, on the other hand i will have some viewers say yeah we get we you know we get winn dixie scotch and here's what I think about it. And we get Grand Legacy Scotch from uh, CVS. And here's what I think about it. So there is some worthwhile consideration. But then ultimately, maybe it's a waste of time. But then, again, maybe tasting and drinking and taste challenging and reviewing beer, wine, and liquor in general is a waste of time. You could make that argument. But it's entertainment, so it's frivolous in a way. I understand. I don't take it too seriously. Although, you know, you try to do a good job, but. You know, some people it's like a religion or it's their job and it's neither for me. OK, so here we got Grant's introduced in 1887. I got this big handle bottle. I see it's twenty three ninety nine at Mathern's. But I'm almost certain that when I bought it a good while back, it was twenty one ninety nine. I got it somewhere for twenty one ninety nine. And it may have been there. Uh but I remember I knew it was cheaper per ounce if you bought the handle bottle as opposed to the 750. I mean, because the 750 or the fifth, as they used to call them, you, you pay in like $15.99. And I knew if I paid six more dollars, I'd get an extra thousand milliliters. Whether, whether the whiskey was good or not, it didn't really matter. So there's Grant's famous um, label. And actually a famous scotch. This is the intro introductory model. He understand. Maxwell, good morning, Ron. Good morning to you, Maxwell, and the Russian Federation. He's watching all the way from Russia, Moscow, I believe. I made the hiss when you get these bottles halfway or lower. There's a, I call it a pressure buildup, and then you have a, a pressure release. You pop the cap. Psh, you can just hear it. You can just hear the air blowing up. You won't get that when it's full. Um, oh, heck. I added too much Scoresby. Scoresby. Not famous. <laughs> not well regarded. Not widely available from what I can tell. But on the other hand, not terrible either. It was introduced by somebody 
don't know who, can't remember. I could find out, I guess, doesn't matter. In 1960, may have been Seagram's, because Seagram's had, seemed like a, a million and one kind of value brands that they might have distanced themselves from. What Seagram's did, they do a lot like these other companies. They had their Seagram's line. That was their premier line. But then they had a lot of value price brands and they would market them under another name. Like, I think it was like American General Distilleries, something named like that, American General Distilleries. And it was registered somewhere in New York City, something like that. But uh, it was Seagram's. But I could be wrong in the name, but it's some kind of just name you wouldn't think of being anything unique. And it just sounded like a distilling company, American General Spirits or whatever, something like that. But it was Seagram's. And, and, and these other companies will do that too. You got Buffalo Trace, that's Sazerac's premier line. And they have some other premier lines too. But then for the lower price, they'll have like a, the Founders Company, County Line Distillery, County Line Distilling, and those kind of things. So how's the weather? Uh, Maxwell, very hot, very hot, but it has been modified by rain. We've been getting rain every day, usually in the afternoon, typical summer. So that's helped uh, quite a bit. Okay, now, just like I thought, Scoresby is, now the Grants is gold. It's gold with even an amber I pour too much, but that's okay. I'm not going to put down. I'm not in any kind of great rush. I really try to be stingy on these and save it. But what happens is I, I, I'll pour too much of one and then I got to even it out because you can, when you're mixing them up, you can sort of feel the weight. And I don't want to give it away in that, in that case. This is very pale. Now I knew the Scoresby was very pale. It's a straw gold. It's pale. Even there's a slight green hue. You get that with some of these, like Cuddy Sark, a real good example of that, Cuddy Sark. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I would consider Cuddy Sark a higher grade product. And it better be because it's a higher price. Uh, well, not around, not, not, not uh, in Louisiana, you know. Of B, I bought that bottle. You can tell it's an old Diageo bottle. Same thing with Cabin Fever. Go get a bottle of Cabin Fever or, or, um, What's that pie hole, the flavored whiskeys pie hole, pecan, I saw that pecan, cherry pie, they have rhubarb pie, you know, who knows what others, but they'd be the same size, same shape bottle, squared off and with these ribs around the, the, the neck. They do the same thing Sazerac does, use a standard bottle for uh, so many different brands. But now the Scoresby bottle, I, I imagine, is going to be changing because it was purchased by Sazerac in 2018. Scoresby and 18 other brands, I believe. Seagram's VO is one of them. And um, so it's under the Sazerac umbrella today. The price has dropped a bit for the big bottles because they were $31 at Walmart. 31 bucks for a Scoresby handle plastic too but now it's dropped to about 23.99 they chopped seven dollars off the price I, I guess when Sazerac bought it they they did some market research and said well it's not selling because it's priced too high you know it's um it's really higher priced than it ought to be or something they might have determined that Let's look at the, the labels real quickly. Scoresby, it's got a crown for the Kingdom of Scotland. It's got a shield with a deer, sun shining through. It looks like a bug. <laughs> uh, some kind of a maple leaf, which would remind me of Canada. And a lion and a unicorn. The connoisseur Scotch whiskey. Oh, yeah, sure, you know. Very rare. Well, around here it is, I guess, unless you go to Walmart. <laughs> uh, which would mean it's not rare, right? blended scotch whiskey and they got this big write-up about how it's just so well regarded everywhere aged for 36 months which is the minimum can't go lower than that uh, so they put it in a used bourbon barrel typically typically 
in Egypt for 36 months. Is it a lot of single malt whiskey? You know, it ain't. It's mostly grain alcohol, grain whiskey. Probably, oh, I'm guessing, I bet you it's 80% grain spirits, grain whiskey. And then you got your 20% single malts, giving it some flavor. Same thing with Grants. Now, when I did the solo review of Grants, I didn't find that it was particularly flavorful. And that's what I told that store manager. I said, you know, maybe it's inexpensive, but it, it doesn't have a bad flavor. It's just bland, sort of bland. Now, they're saying taste and notes. Complex, clean nose with notes of ripe pear and summer fruits. You know, I didn't really see that, but ripe pear and summer fruits. Oh, golly gee. Taste balances vanilla sweetness with malty and light floral fragrant fragrances. Mm, perhaps <laughs> finish long and sweet with a subtle hint of smoke. If smoke is where you're looking to go, Grant's Triple Wood, formerly Family Reserve, is not going to work. I'm sorry. It's just not smoky and it's not peaty. You know what it is? Grainy. It tastes like cereal grains. Not bad. Not off-putting. Not disgusting. Just dull. And that's what you're going to find most of the time with the cheap whiskeys. It isn't so much that they're bad or offensive or you can't stand it or it's terrible. It's a case of they're dull. There's not, there just, there isn't a lot there. Same thing with gin, rum, brandy. Although so some of those can be very qu queer. You know what I'm saying? Very strange. But with beer, you know, it's a lot more treacherous with beer. If you get some of these low grade private label beer brands, all bets are off. You can, and not even all private labels, some of them just actual label, uh, actual brands that are sold around, but they're just so bad. I mean, they're like literally bad. You know what I mean? They're not like, well, it's dull. It doesn't have a lot of character. No, they have character. All right. It's just a, a treacherous, horrible, disgusting, sickening character. Now you see, that's the difference. Finding a bad whiskey, that's actually difficult. Um, although I guess some people would consider bland to be bad. I guess they could, you could look at it that way. But the... You get some of these cheap beers. Woo, woo, watch out, baby. Now, let's look at all the different ones they've got real fast. Grants. Look at the, I'm looking at two, four, six, eight, nine. Now, that's the ones they're showing, and we know how that works. They'll show nine, but they might make 17. Triple Wood Smoky. I'd like to try that. Grants Ale Cask Edition. I shouldn't keep saying I'd like to try it because, of course, I'd like to try them all. Grants Rum Cask. Grant's eight-year-old sherry cask. Grant's 12-year-old. Grant's rare 18-year-old. Now, you know as well as I do that the price is not going to stay $15.99 for these. You might be up, when you're getting to the 18-year-old, now you might be looking at $50, $60. Grant's 25-year-old. Now you could be looking at into the hundreds of dollars. So, you know, you're going to pay for what you get. You want to be cheap? No problem. Be cheap. You say, no, don't use those kind of terms. I'm price conscious. Fair enough. Then be price conscious. But don't expect the great elaboration and you're going to just spend pennies. You know, it isn't going to happen generally. There are ex exceptions. But let's go on with the show. Uh, do I think there's going to be much difference between these? Not really. But I think the scores is going to stand out. And why? because it's really flavorful and exciting. No, it isn't flavorful particularly, and it's certainly not exciting. And it's $15.65 a bottle at international market. So basically they're the same price here in Louisiana. Your state is probably different. I know in John and Illy's state, Georgie said the Scoresby is very cheap, about $9.99 a bottle, but it's at least $15 here. I just think the Scoresby has more single malt flavor. You get a little bread dough and that's going to shine through. The percentages are probably the same, about 80% grain whiskey, 
column steel grain whiskey, and about 20% copper pot steel single malts, you know. But that's just the percentages, probably an 80 20 blend. But it's what is making up the percentage going to make a difference. Okay, well, enough of that. There was just a whiff of peat, but you know what it was really? It was more like compost, like in your backyard, old rotted vegetables. Well, you said, well, that's peat. Yeah, but it isn't quite the same. It's all in the same ballpark, though. So you get a little bit of that degraded vegetable matter. And cereal grains. Is there a harsh burn, bountiful nose? Is it, is it coming at you strong or anything like that? No. It's mild, mellow, laid back, quiet. Uh, uh, yeah, I think that's a good term. I might adopt that term. But I'll probably forget i probably forget to mention a quiet whiskey. It's very quiet. <sighs> Honestly, this one is too. But you say smoke, smoke. Yeah, there is a shade, a ghost of it. Like Rush, Rush the band Rush, a ghost of a chance. But there... Seems like perhaps, maybe, possibly, could be, maybe be a little tiny, infinite, kind of collectible difference, uh, more uh, single malt. But it's so close. I would say in aroma, it's a draw. In appearance, I don't know. I kind of like the paler look, that pale, pale straw. Pale blue eyes. All right. Mm -mm -mm. I wish I hadn't poured so much. Not because I'm scared of drinking it, really. I said I'm trying to save it. Oh, 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 oh. I'm sitting here talking about how there's no smoke. First thing I pick up, smoke. <laughs> Weirdest thing in the world. There was actually a pretty, I got my eyes closed because of the appearance, you know, I don't want to give it away. It was a pretty decent little smokiness. And if you ever drank a Roch beer, these are beers, ger German usually, that they're, 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 the malts, the malts they use are roasted over a smoky fire. And, and then it gets infused with smoke. And then the beer tastes like smoke. Some are heavy handed with it and some are not as heavy handed. But boy, this, you pick it up. And these malts, these malts from Scotland are roasted over a peat fire. And the smoke infuses it and add it. And the Japanese whiskey is the same concept. They try to mimic scotch. And um, some people, like myself, enjoy the smokiness. Other people just can't stand it. It's totally repellent to them. You know, they just say, oh, why would I ever want to drink a whiskey that smells and tastes like smoke? Their simple answer is they would not want to. I know people that just out front say that. Oh, no, terrible, horrible. I'm drinking some Crown. Are they going to drink Jack Daniels? Well, of course, those won't have any kind of smokiness whatsoever. Oh. That gave me the freeze on. Woo! Ah, yeah, yeah. That was pretty harsh, you know. That's that is 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 nothing associated with smooth. If you're thinking of smooth, this ain't gonna work. This is jagged. This is a jagged little pill. Then you meet his beautiful wife. It 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 it's it's. 
harsh screaming meanies, blue meanies, harsh, jagged, ragged, rough cut. I said this before. I said this before. I don't know if I mentioned, but I said this before. It's a rough cut cereal grain application. Well, it's like cat, cat scratch me in my face. Hooey. Hooey, baby. Tell you one thing, this boat is a mess. It, 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 it's got to be grants, got to be grants, got to be grants, got to be grants. <laughs> but I'd give you the willies. Why, why, or why would you ever? There must be a, a use for this. Oh, yeah, you read all that description about the fruit, the summer fruits and the whatever it was. Yeah, it's summer fruits, all right. You know, you know those kind of fruits like rice, corn, <laughs> oats. Yeah, summer grains, maybe. I could tell you what it is. I mean, there's no 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 use even playing around. People play games, friend, and, and I'm not going to. Um, <laughs> almost spilt it. No, this is, I, I, yeah, you say, oh, you glanced, you glanced. Yeah, I did, but I, I, I looked away. But I was going to say it anyway. I was going to say this is Scoresby. It's got to be Scoresby, got to be. Why is that? It has a little more uh, 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 malt whiskey flavor. In fact, I would say that Scoresby has a good deal more malt whiskey flavor, more bread dough. It's certainly smokier along the lines of 100 Pipers, but not, not there, not there. Hey, you know, I'll give you a little secret. Don't tell anybody unless you feel like it. If you want to get a cheap Scotch whiskey, blended Scotch whiskey, and I mean cheap. I see it at $8.99 a bottle in some places. I mean, you're talking about so cheap. It's so great. But it tastes really good. Like, it's way better than it should be. It's got rich smokiness. It does not have does not have harsh grain alcohol. It has nice peat smoke, like I said, and, and, and peat, just that peaty flavor. And um, a lot of single malt character. 100 Pipers, hear me out. 100 Pipers, I'm not playing games. I'm not joking. Yeah, it's only age three years. Is there a 12-year age? Yeah, but try finding that one. But as good as the three-year age? Oh, wee, I'd love to find. And look, even better news. I bought a bottle of 100 Pipers. You say, you lie. Why you come on the internet lie so much? I don't know, because I'm a little... I am a liar. I'll turn you into me. No, seriously. I I bought it. A bottle. Regular size. I'm not talking about a little mini bottle. A regular size bottle, 100 Piper Scotch for $3.98. 3 dollars 98 <laughs> Not $4. $3.98. And 100 Pipers can bust up on a lot of more expensive uh, Scotch whiskeys. 100 Pipers will whip them, beat them up, slap them around. You say, I don't believe it. Well, it's true. It's funny because if you drink hundred, uh, uh, I'm sorry. If you drink Scoresby on its own, you're not going to talk about the smoke much, or bready, doughy, single malt. Nah, on its own, you probably just talk about well, it's kind of harsh grain, you know. The under is kind of like, <laughs> but when you put it in a contest, the smoke comes out. Now let's do one more sip of Grant. I know it's Grant's. So I ain't looked yet, but I know it is. <laughs> mm. 
No, 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 no. I don't know why. I, po- <sighs> I don't know. Is that a good sign that um, when you take a sip of whiskey, it makes you catch a seizure? I don't know if that's really that great of a, you know, a quality. Uh, you would think. No, it isn't, actually. <laughs> Let's look at any, any comments. None. All right. We got a lot of viewers. All right. So, uh, oh, well, this is the Scoresby. This is the church. This is the steeple. Look inside and see all the people. If this says grants, I'm going to feel so shamed on the internet. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. How you feel? I feel good. You know why? Because I got it right. And I knew I was going to get it right. And I called it. And I did two taste challenges so far with Grant's, and I got it right. Is Grant's kind of rough cut, harsh, and kind of... I was talking about how dull it was. You know, I'm not so sure it's dull. Let me take another sip. If there is some underlying sweetness also, or I should say embedded sweetness, it isn't really underlying. It's kind of like throughout embedded. <sighs> oh, man, I don't know about Grant's. You know how some of these now, some of these whiskeys, boy, you start off at the start, they'd be like, well, it's okay. It's kind of mild, you know, but a little bland. But boy, if you keep adventuring through it, and I don't, I don't drink whiskey. I just adventure through it. It's like little adventures. But Grant's is, is a little harrowing. It's a little scary. Kind of a rough neighborhood. I see a lot of graffiti and some questionable people. And look at the litter. These people can't clean up. You know, this thing is a little, ooh, ooh. Is scores be really rare? Yeah, it's so rare you can find it at Walmart. <laughs> Better than rich and rare? Well, I mean, they're two different types. Scoresby's Scotch, blended Scotch whiskey and rich and rare is blended Canadian. Oh, it, they're about even in their proper category. I'll say they're about even. Yes, they come from the same company now nowadays. Sazerac. Uh, well, well, which one would I rather drink, Rich and Rare or Scoresby? Uh, neither. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, well, it depends, you know. If I wanted to drink a, a mild, rather smooth, I got to admit, sort of smooth. Don't take too big of a gulp. Oh, no. Sort of smooth, smoky, lightly smoked with a scintilla of peat whiskey. Uh, Well, okay. I guess Scoresby would do okay. Be all right. If I wanted to drink a run-of-the-mill Canadian blended whiskey with some with some sort of unusual almond extract or white rum underbody with perhaps and probably, not even perhaps, probably more sherry wine than you'd want in a whiskey. Yeah, I think rich and rare would probably work. But if I had to pay for them, I guess I'd buy rich and rare, which is eight ninety nine. Oh, yeah, eight ninety nine. And Scoresby's fifteen sixty five. I don't think I'm gonna pay that much more. Uh, you doing all right, Scoresby? You doing all right today? Scoresby's um, uh, it's it's kicked in today. You never know, I guess. Well, hated to use too much of it. Tell you to use it. You say you're using a whiskey. I am using it. So taste challenge. I am a little surprised because I was expecting nothing and I got something. And the smoke is really intriguing in this case. The doggone uh, grants ain't cutting it. The news is starting, so I must depart. The grants is the clear loser today, the clear loser. And I don't have any... uh, I don't even care. I don't. I don't work for grants. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> Scoresby wins. Wins today. 
No question about it. And we're going to bring in another Sazerac whiskey tomorrow. What will happen? Oh, no, no, really. I can't say, but it'll be interesting. Thanks for watching this video production. Everybody take care. Have a great Saturday. Scoresby, the Walker Blue of the inner city. You could, you could make that argument.